Hello, Jonathan Wagner here from solidzymes.com and today I'm going to show you how to purify protein using an anion exchange column on an ACTA FPLC. And the first step in that process is uh, preparing the buffers for FPLC. Uh, they need to be filtered and degassed and we're going to do both of those things uh, in one process which is vacuum filtration. So I've got here buffer A, this is 10 millimolar tris, pH 8 with 100 millimolar salt. Um, I'm gonna pour it into this Nalgene bottle top uh, filter, which is connected to my aquarium pump. Pull it through into this other bottle using um, the vacuum. Collect the clean degassed buffer um, on the other side. Uh, and I'm just going to repeat that for buffer B and for water as well because I need water uh, for the acta. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. You can do 500 mils at a time. I'm going to turn this on and I'll see you over at the acta for prepping the acta. Okay, so I finished filtering and degassing my buffers and water, and I'm here at the FPLC. You can see I have one liter of buffer A, half a liter of buffer B, which is just the same as buffer A, uh, but with 1.5 molar salt added to loop proteins from our anion exchange column. Um, and now I need to prime the pumps with the buffers. Um, the acta is stored with water in the lines, and that's very important because if there were salt in the lines, it might corrode the stainless steel of the pumps. So right now everything is water. I need to pull buffer into these lines and into the pumps, um, not only to prime the pumps, but also to get rid of the air. I think you can see here, um, there's some air bubbles in the lines, and we don't want those getting into our columns. So we got to clear those out. Um, I'm going to move the line labeled A1 into buffer A and the line labeled B1 into buffer B bottle. And then I'm going to use the automatic uh, FPLC method. It's called pump wash. It's going to pull just enough buffer into the lines to fill the pumps. Okay, so now the FPLC is ready and I'm gonna see you over at the other table to load proteins onto the anion exchange column. Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do with the FPLC before we can load the protein onto the column and that is equilibrate the column with buffer A. Uh, this is a high trap QFF column. It's made by Cytiva um, and I stored it with buffer B. That's the one that has 1.5 molar sodium chloride. And I did that because I wanted to prevent bacteria from growing while I was storing it, but it's also gonna prevent our protein from binding to this column. So I'm gonna use the FPLC to pump buffer A into the column. In order to do that, uh, I'm just going to hook it up right here above the UV detector. Um, so I'll unhook that, take the plug out of the top of the column. I'll screw it into the UV detector here. And get it just finger tight. Connect it at the top as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, control the pump um, manually with the Unicorn software. I'm going to tell it to give me a gradient of 100% A, and then I'm going to tell it to pump at 2.5 mils per minute for uh, a total of about 15 or 20 mils, or until I see the conductivity of the solution coming out of my column um, equilibrate, and then I'll know that we're ready to load the protein. Okay, so the column has been equilibrated with buffer A, and I have here 10 
one mil fractions of protein that I alluded from nickel agarose. Um, this protein has 250 millimolar imidazole, but it's pH 8, so it's not going to be charged, and that's important. We want to keep the amount of charged molecules fairly low in our protein, um, below the equivalent of about 100 millimolar sodium chloride. Okay, so you can have some salts in your buffer, but not too much. And keep in mind that salts like phosphate have even more charge than sodium chloride. So just try to keep it at a minimum, and it should bind to the column. Also, we're not going to take any chances. Um, I'm going to collect the protein as it flows through the other side of the column. And that way, um, if for some reason it doesn't bind to the column, we still have it, and it's not a big deal. Um, and I have here a 10 mil syringe, a lure lock adapter that comes with the Acta. Uh, so I'm going to put that on here. A little bit of plastic tubing, which I'm going to put on that. This is how I'm going to get the protein out of my microfuge tubes. I also have here 5 mils of buffer A that I'm going to use later to push the protein through the column. I have two labeled tubes. One is going to be for the waste. One is going to be for the protein flow through. So let me go ahead and get the protein out of these fractions. Now you can see that I pulled up some air with my protein. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the um, syringe upside down, tap it, and then force the air out until I see a little bit of liquid at the top. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, start flowing the protein into my column. Now, I'm going to look at the clock and I'm going to look at the graduations on my syringe and make sure that I'm flowing at approximately one or two mils per minute and I'm not going too fast because I don't want to crush the column. And I'm going to start off flowing into the waste um, <clears throat> into the waste tube for the first five mils because this is the buffer going through. After the first five, I'm going to switch to um, collecting the protein in my other tube. Okay, that's five mils, so it's possible that there might be protein coming out of the bottom of the column at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to collecting possibly the protein in this tube and continue flowing at about two mils per minute. Okay, so I've flowed the protein into the column. Um, about half of it has come through and half of it is still in the column. So I'm going to get my five mils of buffer A and pull that into my syringe now. Okay. and continue flowing into my collection tube um, to collect the protein for another five mils. Okay, so I finished um, pushing any possibility of protein 
out of the column with the buffer. Um, so I have about 10 mils here in my collection tube, but um, I know from experience this particular protein is gonna be bound to the column. So it's, it's on here on the resin, and all I need to do is take it off, and I'm gonna put it back on the FPLC where it came from, and then we're going to run a gradient program to elute the protein from the column. Okay, so I'm not gonna go over everything you need to know to run an FPLC, but I wanna show you the program that I used to elute this protein in the Unicorn software here. So um, in the method editor, you can see I set the base CV to five because it's a five mil column. Um, I set the alarm pressure to 0.8. That's because the column has a high pressure limit of 0.4 and the system already has a pressure of 0.4. So anytime it goes above 0.8, I want it to shut down the pump rather than crushing my column. Um, I flowed at two and a half mils per minute and I had it mix in a gradient of up to 30% buffer B over the course of 10 column volumes. So that's um, 50 mils. And during that time, we collected two and a half mil fractions. Then there was an, a second gradient that was shorter up to about 60% B through the course of four column volumes. Um, that is to elute DNA. And then finally, there was a, a gradient immediately to 100% B, and that's because I want to um, store the column in buffer B. And, you know, once this method is done, the column is going to be ready to um, store back in the fridge. Okay, and then we end fractionation, end method. Um, and the result of that was um, you can see here on the chromatogram um, the conductivity from the three gradients, so up to 30% B, up to 60% B, and then up to 100% B, the conductivity keeps going up as we mix in more salt. And you can see that the UV absorbance starts going up around fraction 9, and it stays high until about fraction 21. Uh, when it goes back down, there's, there's something eluding from the column during that time. And there's something else eluding from the column um, at fractions 29 to 31. It makes a really tall peak. Um, and I know from experience uh, that this is a DNA peak. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to take all the fractions that are eluded from those peaks, find them here in the fraction collector, and run them on an SDS page gel to see which fractions have um, my protein of interest and have it in a pure enough form for my experiments. And then I'm going to combine those fractions for the next step. So with that, um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, if you have questions, you can email me, jonathan at solidsdimes.com. Or if you're interested in hiring someone to purify protein for you, you can visit us at solidsdimes.com. Thanks for watching.